the first thing I said, this cannot happen here. This is the land of freedom. They cannot reach me here. I couldn't believe it. For more than 10 years, Amani Mustafa and her two children were on the run in the United States, hiding from her ex-husband and his brother. Amani says both had threatened to kill her if she did not return to Egypt and Islam. Amani became a Christian after reading the Bible in secret in the bathroom. When her father learned she had left Islam, he summoned her to his home. He said, I have a straightforward question for you. Is it Islam or is it Christ? And I, as I was about melting, I said, it's Christ. And uh, at this point, uh, he got up to hit me and he said that he's going to uh, do this and that. And he was very threatening and he's going to tie me to his car and make me an example to the city. Amani fled and was in hiding for several years. She later married a Muslim who promised she could practice her Christian faith in secret. But his attitude changed after their second child was born. Amani was no longer allowed to attend church. She had to wear a veil. Still a Christian in her heart, Amani says she struggled when her husband forced her to read the Quran, the Islamic holy book, to their children. I felt like I'm feeding my children poison. And that was the hardest thing. To know the truth. And not be able to speak it. Amani's husband agreed to send her and the children to live in the United States. He vowed to join them later. Amani says she felt a sudden sense of freedom and relief when the plane left Egyptian airspace. First thing that went was my veil that terrified my son as he looked at me and he said, Mom, you're going to go to hell. And I said, son, we just left. Once in America, Amani recommitted herself to Christ. That's when the persecution returned. When she told her husband that she was filing for divorce, he demanded the kids be brought back to Egypt and Islam. He said Amani would pay a price for her decision. He sent uh, his brother after us. They were listening to our conversations. For myself and my family, my, my mom also. And uh, there were people surveilling us. And, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know that this could even happen. Amani and her children fled to another state where her husband could not find them. Today, more than 10 years later, the threats have disappeared. She's no longer in hiding. Amani has moved forward publicly with her life. She feels called to serve in various ministries, reaching out to women facing Islamic oppression. She's a host of a new woman's television show that is broadcast throughout the Middle East. Amani and her co-hosts, all former Muslims, talk about their experiences with Islam. There are so many women living under Muslim husbands or Muslim fathers or uh, Muslim families that are living the same things that I'm living, uh, that I lived back then. There are so many women that need to know and hear about the freedom of Christ that I experience today. Those tears are not tears of pain, but actually they are tears of appreciation because now I know that I am saved through the grace of Christ. Amani feels privileged to share her joy on television and she's proud of her children. Son Joshua has become an ordained pastor. Her oldest daughter is also in ministry. Amani now enjoys a loving marriage with her American Christian husband and their daughter, Mary. I am convinced that every experience I uh, lived through in my life, it was to be for his glory, to be used for his glory. You see, we have a choice. Either we sit and uh, mope and, and weep over our spilled milk, or we can just use the hardship and the bad experiences for his glory. And I choose to glorify God's name. هنخاف من إيه والرب بنفسه اللي حمينا هو معانا وساكن فينا طول الأيام طب ليه بنخاف 
لا مرض ولا دي راح يفصلنا عن حب وده بايده شايلنا وبقينا سلام حوالينا اصوات كتير لكن في 